Hi, this is Lee Solden. This is the ninth in a series of videos uh, for now that I'm doing to teach you uh, Tagalog, specifically Filipino. Okay, and get right into the lesson. Uh, please watch my first eight. Um, the first one concentrates on my system, and I try not to make all of these videos spend 10 minutes talking about, talk about my system. So listen to the first one um, and go from there, okay? Um, okay, we're on story 12. So these first nine videos cover stories uh, 1 through 12 on this uh, audiobook found on YouTube. It's not something I made. I'm just helping you with it using my my method, okay? Um, look in the comments. Everything I'm saying here, I put in the comments. Okay? So, including the link to the audiobook that I'm helping you with. Story 12, Ear Tuning Syllables. Gustnio o ba mag kape o mag ima gas ma ta bos nang in yong tang ha. The an anong pang himagas ang myro on kayo myro on kaming pudding at apple pie. Hmm. Sa toto olang ka pelang ang gusto ko. Gus niyo po banang a sukal at gatas pa kisa mahan nang gatas. Sentence one. <clears throat> um, I'm going to read the ear turning syllables just for sentence one. Gus niyo po ba mag kape. Please, you. Politeness marker po. Um, often said the last thing is a very short sentence. It's always the second item, sort of, in a sentence, um, which could be the short phrase, could be the last thing you say. Okay, so does it please you to have coffee? Mag cape? Okay, um, you'll often see where English uses an F, Filipino, which does not have the F, uses a P. So their word for coffee is cape. Okay. Okay, mag is a common prefix to create a verb with, it often has the meaning of do or make, and other things like that. Um, see, this sentence is continued further on uh, set, uh Screen two, so okay. Screen two goes continues or o is from Spanish. Have dessert mag himagas. So himagas is dessert. Mag himagas is kind of do dessert, right? <clears throat> After matapos of nang your inyong meal tang halian. Ear tuning syllables for sentence two. O mag himagas matapos nang in yong tang halian. Okay, infinitive and command. Mag cafe have coffee. Um, or to have to have coffee. Base word cafe. Mag verb. So just add mag. Get the prefix. Um, to get the infinitive form, sorry, add mock. Okay, which you also get the command form. Cape to mock cape. Present tense. Okay, you need double. It's one of the mercury tenses. Signal needed. We gotta change the mock to nag, so it comes out to nag ka cape or present nag ka cape. Past, no doubling. 
Needs a signal. It started. Not copy. Future. Need the doubling, but not the signal for starting. So, mag, ka, copy. So the, the ka goes to kaka, ka, showing the era um, when the murky tenses, uh, which are present. And future, because in English, those are the two tenses that we use in English to form the future tense. Um, either the future tense itself or the present tense with a future time reference, such as, I am going to the store. Okay. Hmm. Oh, I messed up. I put a mag or I should have put mag. I try to do these by memory and using my own memory tricks. Okay, I corrected it though. Okay. Infinitive and command. Mag he magas. Um, have dessert. Mag is do. Himagas is dessert. So, mag himagas. Base word, himagas, dessert. Just add the mag to get the uh, infinitive. Himagas to mag himagas. Present. Signal that the action started is needed. So, mag is going to go to nag. Okay, that's the signal used for mag verbs. See, which all verbs have that except the um infix verbs. They don't have that. The rest of them have a signal that the action started. Okay, doubling at the front needed to show its murkiness. For the fact, in English, present tense is one of the two tenses we use to show the murky future tense. Again, this is a memory trick about the English language, okay? It's, it's for you to remember the English, that, that little trick. Help you remember that the two tenses to get the doubling in Filipino are the present and the future. Okay. Mechanics of that himagas to he himagas to nag he himagas. And it says, I forgot to change mag to nag. But I corrected it. Okay. Doubling. Oh, no. Okay. Past tense. Doubling? No. That's not one of the murkier, murky tenses. Um, started? Yep, not just started, it can, it's been done. Past is not only started, but it's completed. So the mechanics, himagas to nag himagas. Now, uh, uh, the, the mechanics of you always double first, right? Then you put the, the affix or the, the, the suffix, the prefix or the infix, and then the last thing you do is put any other uh, prefixes or suffixes that go there. <laughs> okay. So it's a three step process usually. In, uh, okay. <sighs> okay, the future, doubling. Yep, it's a murky tense. Okay. Um, started? No. So it's not going to be the signal. So you start with hemogas. And go to hihimagas, to mag hihimagas, stays mag, because there's no, don't, don't need that signal for the action starting. Um, and sentence three. What I know, dessert, pang himagas. Pang himagas is another word for dessert. It's the most common one, actually. A okay, subject marker, ang. Okay, you is the subject, whole phrase is um, marked, where the subject is found. Have got my own, you, kayo. Uh, basic structure sentence, you have got what desserts. The placement of the subject at the end of the sentence is quite usual in Filipino. And later you'll see if they put it first, they have a special marker, I-A-Y, <laughs> to show you that, hey, they put the subject first. But usually you find the subject toward the end of a sentence. Okay. Okay, ear turning syllables for sentence three. Anong pang himagas ang maro on kayo. 
Okay, my row own equals can equal exist. There are, have, have got, and there is. Um, sentence four, have, my row own, we, coming, pudding, and ot, apple pie. Here two syllables, my row own, ka, ming, Pudding at apple pie. Coming is kami. Okay, that is we plus connector ng. Okay. Um, so the connector here is connecting the phrase we have with pudding and apple pie, which is what they have. Uh, kami is the non inclusive we. In other words, it's including the person speaking but not the person being spoken to. The person at the table getting taken, you know, they're asking for some apple pie. They certainly don't have the apple pie, right? <laughs> they would need to order it, right? So the person who has the apple pie is the, the people in the restaurant, right? Not including the person being talked to here. So they call that the non-inclusive we. Okay. Kami. Five. Okay, she says, really, or in truth, she's, she says in truth. So, in, sa, truth, toto, only, long, coffee, cafe. Okay. Um, subject marker, ang, pleases, gusto, me, ko. So, what, please, what pleases me, okay, pleases me, that's the, uh, the subject, me, pleases me, the coffee, only, okay? So, I'll just introduce the phrase where the uh, subject is located. Okay, ear turning syllables for sentence five. Mm. Sa, to, to, o, lang, ka, pe, lang, ang, gusto, ko. Okay. I have a note here. Ko is a shorter version of ako, which is I, me, self. But they use, you'll notice, pay attention, they'll use one for I and the other one for me. Okay. Let's keep going here. Okay. Ang marks the ang phrase, the phrase where the subject is. In contrast, they also have sa. Phrases that marks location of the action, and they have nang phrases, which is spelled ng, and that nang phrase is where the object is. Okay. Um, please, uh, excuse me, sentence six pleases you, gusto nio, politeness marker po, question marker ba. Object marker, nang, sugar, azucal, and at, milk, gatas. So, does it please you to have sugar and milk? Um, the ear tuning syllables, gusnio, poba, nang, azucal, at, gatas. Okay. Uh, let's see here. You have to translate gusto nio as would you like. To be able to consider milk and sugar as the object of the sentence, so she likes the sugar, would she, would she like sugar and milk, right? Okay, sentence seven. Please, that's Paki Samahan, object marker, nang, milk, gatas. Okay, and uh, you're doing syllables, Paki Samahan, nang, gatas. Okay, Paki Samahan, I have a note here, says also as a um, in verb, that's one that uses H-A-N instead of the I-N. As that, as that verb, Paki Samahan, it would mean uh, live together, treat, deal, and share. But besides being that verb, 
Baki Samahan simply means please. Okay. Um, and that's going to be a short video. Uh, that was lesson 12. And so altogether, my nine videos, this is the ninth one, uh, go through stories 1 through 12. It does a lot to cover the basic verb structure in Filipino. Okay. Um, and a lot about the basic sentence structure. Uh, it's not... The stuff on the sentence structure is not perfect. Um, as we go forward, uh, hopefully you'll keep w with me. <laughs> but I'm not going to make any more videos on Filipino for a while. It might be a few weeks. But over time, I'm going to cover the all 80 stories in this uh, audiobook. Okay? So anyway, if you like this sort of thing, number one, hey, go back and watch videos one through eight. <laughs> Okay, and uh, as you do that, like them all, and share my videos, uh, subscribe to my channel, tell your friends about what you have here. It's a practical way to learn Filipino. Um, it's ear-based, so we, we, I talk about you got to hear it perfectly as fast as possible, right? And then, after you're on your way to getting a native ear for Filipino, Start worrying more about the vocabulary and how do you pick the vocabulary up? Well, you, you, that's what I'm doing here for you. I'm telling you what each sentence means. This is all in written form. You can you can look at that the notes in the comments of this video. But you could just simply loop this uh, video, and over time you'll get the associations in your mind between the uh, English words and the Filipino words. But the primary way that you learn this is actually do read-throughs, which is you look over my notes or listen to me, whichever, and then you actually listen to the video you're trying to learn, one sentence at a time for a beginner. Uh, how do you do that? You've just looked over the notes, what it means. Now you listen to it three times while reading it. Close your eyes, listen three times, look over the notes again, or listen to the notes again. Again, read three times while listening. Again, close your eyes and listen three times. Now, the fact you're getting a native ear, getting toward a native ear for Filipino, and the fact you're putting this information together to your speech center will allow your speech center to overnight to put the Filipino in your brain, you'll know the Filipino in the morning or more of it every morning when you wake up, okay? You don't have to keep repeating these sentences, listen to them over and over again until you understand them. It's not necessary. Don't spend much time on it. Go to the next sentence. Um, you'd be amazed at how quickly you start picking it up. And the more you pick it up, the more faster it goes because new words are in context of known words at that point, right? And your ear keeps getting better. Now, the other the other element besides doing ear tuning exercises, which again they're described very thoroughly in video one, and the read throughs, which you're doing right now, I'm helping you with this video. The third element of my program, there's only three. <laughs> the third element is passive listening. That means you're looping. Sometimes you can loop my video if you want to, or you can choose not to do that. Just look at my notes in a written form, right? But what you got to do to learn the story is loop the story that you're learning, okay? So you go to YouTube, open up that video. Uh, it's uh, like, I think it's 80 daily, 80 daily conversations uh, for Filipino, okay? Um, open it up and play it. You don't have to pay any attention to it. Just play it in the background while you're eating, uh, while you're getting ready for bed, while you're waking up in the morning. Uh, like music, hey, play your favorite music. Doesn't have to be in Filipino, mind you. Just hit whatever, and have the have that Filipino audiobook playing in the background softly, so as not to spoil the enjoyment of your music. Okay, you're studying for college. Great, just have that Filipino playing lightly in the background. Okay, now. 
Why? Why are you going to loop this? Number one, along with the ear tuning syllables and having this playing for several hours a day in the background, your ear is going to go native for Filipino. That's reason one. Now, now, what do you do with that? Well, there's reason two to listen to Filipino for three hours a day. Because when you hear it perfectly, it is, and you're hearing it in the background for several hours a day, plus you're working with these read-throughs, associating the English words with the Filipino words, that combination will very quickly have you understanding these Filipino sentences, okay? If you don't, if that point, if you stop doing your, if your ear was perfect, but you stop doing the passive listening, then your rate of learning is only one-fifth what it would be if you had the several hours a day in, your, in, in the background here in the Filipino. Why? I'm telling you to play it and ignore it. How can it make, how can it boost your learning fivefold? It's because your speech center is learning it. I'm not teaching you. I don't teach the student. I teach your speech center. Overnight, your speech center puts stuff together for you, and you know the language better the next day, okay? You let your speech center do all the heavy work. Never look at this as studying. Languages don't need to be studied. They need to be absorbed. How do you absorb them? Just like any kid, same three things. The kid keeps hearing this language over and over again, especially repeated phrases on a daily basis. My ear tuning syllables are having you listen to the same stuff over and over again, right? Just like a kid hears the same words in a household over and over again. The kid's ear goes native. It keeps hearing it. And plus, but it's not just hearing those phrases over and over again. The language is there in the background all day, just, just as I'm asking you. So the kid's going toward a native ear. And then as the words are spoken, the, the kid sees meaning by, okay, what time of the day it is, is the mother smiling when she's talking, or what's the, what's the brother doing, what, what did the child just do, um, any, anything at all, the speech center picks up and puts it together with those words, and kid may not know what the heck the mother said that day, but overnight, the speech center puts it together, and now the kid knows its own native language, right? Why? Because the kid hears it perfectly, the ear is tuned in. Now when, now when he hears words, he sees meaning, okay? Well, you are no language, it's English, right? So you just have to look at the English words and then play the Filipino words to get those associations a lot simpler, a lot quicker, okay? You learn way faster than, faster than a child. Um, you have that advantage of already knowing the language, and you're just transferring all that knowledge to a new language by doing these associations, okay? Okay, um, again, like, share, subscribe, comment, tell people about my channel. Um, that's all for now. You have a great day. Bye-bye.